Hello and welcome to the Six Acre Farmstead. I got a question for you. What are your honeybees worth to you? I mean, actually, how much is each value? What is the value for each hive? What do you put a number on the bees? You know, if you bought a nuke or you bought a package of bees, how much did you pay for those bees? Has that has that colony grown? Question is also now is are you are you overwintering your bees? Um, general practices going into winter, you make especially if you're living in the uh, the upper climates there. Maybe I live in the Midwestern, uh, excuse me, Mideastern part of the United States, uh, where, you know, this time of year we're rolling into December. I should be in the 30s to 40s kind of range now. Uh, right now we're in some, having some, a, a stretch of 50 degree weather. Uh, my concerns are the bees eating through their winter stores. Each hive, as they went through there, the whole te top deep box was full. Uh, pretty full with a lot of weight to the hive. I, can't, I don't have any accurate measurements. I've got 21 colonies out here from nukes to, to uh, 10 frame deep hive bodies, double stacks. Um, but prior to winter is, you know, you can't get into your hive during the winter. You can't move frames. You can't manipulate the cluster. At least I don't. Um, so what do I do? I supplemental feed as in dry uh, sugar cakes um, or add fondant if needed as later. Usually prior to in November time frame, I put my feeder boards in there and I put a four pound uh, block of sugar cake in each hive. Um, the purpose of it is one, it absorbs moisture and two, as the bees move up through their, uh, their honey, they don't move side to side to see what's available. They move upward. If your cluster's over in the right hand side of the box, they move upward. If it's left, upward. They don't move side to side. Uh, they try to stay around their cluster and uh, fluttered wing muscles generate heat. Well, during the warmer months, or these warmer stretches of weather during the winter, they go through their honey stores. If you don't go into your hives or do something for your hives, they will starve on you. Um, for me, $200, two $300 worth of bees and the hive itself is not worth the starvation or me to do anything about it, so what can I do? Um, it, so on top of feeding the sugar cake feed, uh, it's usually inexpensive. It's a four pound bag of sugar, a little bit, uh, three quarters cup of water. I think I use a teaspoon, honey bee healthy, make a sugar cake, let it dry, throw them, put them on those, on the hives. For now, they're going through them. I just did a, uh, pop the lid inspections. We're gonna go out to the bee yard and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Um, and I noticed that a few hives have started eating on the cakes. I've actually got one hive who actually ate the center out of the cake already. That one I have a concern about. Um, I've got, it's supposed to be mid 50s today and a few other days in stretches in the upper 40s, 50s, the bees are active. They're eating on their honey stores. Um, so what do I need to do to help make help them make through the winter? Today, I'm gonna to talk about supplementing with fondant. Um, through my bee club, I was able to procure 50 pound boxes of, I guess it's this carps fondant. Um, each box is roughly, I think I paid 40 bucks a box for them. So we're looking less than uh, less than a dollar a pound for that. Compared to going to uh, a hobby store, AC Moore, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, or whatever, Wilton Cake Fondant, a one pound box retail is seven dollars. Forty percent off coupon, you're still paying three fifty four dollars for that box. It's one pound. Um, what I'm going to do is add like two to three pound slabs of there, so you multiply that cost there. But when you get this stuff here, how do you cut it? Uh, and I'm gonna go into the, some of the methods that I've utilized and talk about a few things there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the fondant out of the box. It comes in, it's in a big blue bag. Um, it is extremely sticky, it's like clay. And uh, I'll explain further. So let me get started from there. Now, I pulled the, turn the box aside, pulled this out. Um, fondant is very, pliable, malleable, moldable. Um, that's why cake decorators use it, plus it's made of sugar and corn syrup. Um, keep in mind that once you take it out of the box, if you try to put it back in the box there, you're gonna blow out your box, or you're gonna have to try to mold this thing to fit back in here. Um, stuff comes unwrapped. This is actually the stuff that's using, you're gonna, you can put in uh, queen cages, um, candy plugs for those there. Uh, figured it's sugar and corn syrup, a little separated there, here. It is extremely sticky, um, so but so you're gonna have to, a little bit of a clean up there. 
So what are the wings to cut this stuff here? So I got a 50 pound block of this things here. You can measure out and, and or cut slabs and weigh them out if need be, or just cut what you uh, cut one, figure get a, an idea of what a one pound thickness or a few pound thickness is here. You can tear it up, do whatever. Just keep in mind that this stuff is sticky here, and you're gonna have to a lot of cleaning up here. So what are the different ways to cut this stuff here? Um, in the past, I've utilized a knife, actually one of these carving knives here. Uh, the one thing about trying to, it is a bit thick and trying to put, put through this, cut through this, um, the sugar gets a little caught up in the serrated edges there. Plus you always want to be careful you don't cut yourself because this thing slips or does whatever you're going to get cut. It's a safety concern. So I somewhat uh, don't like utilizing this thing. Um, I'm going to try a couple different other methods here a little bit more safer so I don't have to worry about being cut. Um, you got a serrated blade and I was talking about there's a thin blade carving knives there. I'm going to try not to utilize these things here, rather not. Um, somebody says, well, let me use my uncapping knife. Well, guess what? My uncapping, uncapping knife is extremely sharp and serrated on both edges, so I really can't put pressure on there without risking cutting myself again. Um, so thought about what's the best means to do this. Well, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to show to you a couple, a couple pieces of 2x4. And what we're going to do is set the fondant block on the two by four. Why do I want to do that? Well, I'm going to use the old school bow method. So somebody says in my, uh, my B club, talk about using the wire from the wiring frame. So I cut a section of this off. I also heard use dental floss. We're going to try that also. So what I'm going to do is expose some of this vomit here, roll it down. Um, another thing is, like, what am I going to put this on since it's extremely sticky? Uh, the thing I thought about, and it's all about value savings, a lot of these videos here, that's why I talk about buying a 50 pound block of fondant for 40, for 40 bucks. Um, some places sell it for a little bit more than that for markup because they had to pay for shipping costs there and it's your convenience, it's whatever you do. Um, I thought, well, once I cut the stuff, I'll stick it on tissue paper, not wax paper. The reason tissue paper is it's thin. Um, and I can the bees can easily chew through it. I don't have to worry about absorption. I um, mean, or or the the waxiness with wax paper is a little thick. It's got that wax build up here. When I put these things into a hive, one of the concerns is the moisture dripping back back down onto the bees. There, I just want to prevent that there. Um, if anything, cut one side and put the wax paper on the above the the fondant if you can. So basically, the the fondant is in direct contact with the frames or your feeder itself there, and keeps that uh, the means of the sugar or the moisture in the bees dripping back down dripping that back down on them so let's go and get started with this here so I got a piece of wire took a couple one by one pieces of wood here wrap them around and making like an old school survival uh, bow saw of sorts there so it's our our garlot or whatever so basically we're going to take this thing here and cut it. Probably one of the thing is when I'm doing this, I know exactly what's happening is unless you get this up, it's actually re-gluing itself back down. So I mean, uh, might want to set this on the side here and do the same thing and we'll try cutting this way. reason with the blocks is I can go straight down the blocks and you know what look at that cut a big hunk off here and for me set it there with the blocks I can go straight down the table and cut it you can see how pliable this stuff is it's malleable um, it's gonna take shape or whatever there's no simple way of cutting this stuff here that I found you can probably let it get a little bit harder and cut it um, just keep it at room temperature. I haven't done that. I mean, this, this, this is, but for this purpose here, I'm just explaining to you different means of cutting this here. Um, dental floss. Oops. I guess I got into the box of dental floss. I'll be back. All right. Got another pack of dental floss here. So we're going to pull a stretch of this out. Oh. 
over here and do the same thing. See this stuff is pretty identical to talk. Might need to get some sliding off of the the wood here. I don't think this is a cutting as well as the wire does. So wire just take off about a two or three foot piece. Twist it and tie it if need be, and then and then there goes another slab. So I think the wire probably works a lot better for this year. Um, cut pieces off here and just stick them. Doesn't have to be perfect. All this, if you use a feeder shim, just make sure when you cut these pieces there that you mold it into your feeder shim there. Uh, I got this is one hive that I definitely want to put a piece, a, a, another piece of fondant in there. The others, these are probably probably one pound. It's probably almost a three quarter pound. This probably here is about a four. I don't know, maybe about a six or seven piece of pound piece of fondant. Might be a little more than that. But other than that, big fondant. I have back up, put in box in a box, back in a box. If you want to cut these things up ahead of time and put them away, um, you might want to dust them with some powdered sugar, uh, make it less sticky there. Uh, use a vacuum sealer, put them in back, put them in vacuum seal bags, uh, and set them away. You just have to you can keep them with you if you're going to go visit your bee yard or if you have out yards, and just cut us uh, cut the bag open. Um, I would remove it personally. I wouldn't put the bag in there with it. I'm worried about condensation dripping back on the bees, plastic being in there. Um, so just uh, cut the the vacuum seal bag and peel it off of the font. Set it set it in the, the feeder shim there, and the bees will do their own thing. Um, so what we're gonna do now is take this out to the bee yard, and I'll explain to you uh, what I was looking for in the bees. <laughs> 